Um, John, John Mighton, um, what, was it Pythagoras who said everything is numbers, or was it Euclid, or was it some other Greek philosopher who said everything is numbers? I actually don't know. Uh, um, and, and somebody else has said that architecture is math made physical and real. And so we've had a little introduction to math, the importance of math in our lives and in the education of our youth. Uh, we've had a little instruction from a guy who connects memory to math. And now we're going to hear from an architect who has built a house based and devoted to math. This is Bridget Shim. Bridget. So first of all, uh, the distinguished writer Robert Fulford described Toronto ravines as one of the chief characteristics of our local terrain, our topographical signature. <clears throat> our earliest work was really experimenting with this ravine edge, looking at retaining walls, grade beams, rusting steel, linking top and bottom. <clears throat> Many of our projects are really small in scale, but have to claim a much larger territory. <clears throat> We're always creating a new foreground for an existing condition that is the natural background. We're also, we're also always interlocking water and ravine edge, water and sky. We love the way that winter is capable of registering these subtle shifts of atmospheric temperature that are often difficult to perceive. <clears throat> In a way, we try to bring the ravine inside, looking at leaf patterns of the black locust, one of the amazing trees within our Carolinian forests. Our buildings often follow natural contours and oscillate between the urban fabric and the Toronto ravine. We're always trying to pull the ravine landscape from the outside into our buildings and simultaneously push our buildings out into nature. The Integral House is a very special ravine project, which helps us reshape our relationship to nature in the middle of the largest metropolis in Canada. <clears throat> I would like to dedicate this idea talk to our friend and client, James Stewart. I'm pleased to share a remarkable journey with Jim that weaves together mathematics, music, and architecture. These were Jim's passions, and they shaped his view of the world. This photo shows my husband and partner, Howard. He's the tall one in the back. Jim and I are the two short ones in the front. Uh, <clears throat> Jim did a lot of research before selecting us to realize his vision. He told us, first of all, that straight lines were boring. He wanted curves. We had not used curves in our work, and Jim had faith in us. <clears throat> Realizing graceful curves led to collaborations with builders, engineers, and fabricators in new and meaningful ways. His request for curves re required rethinking and reconsidering what our definition of architecture was. He also wanted a performance space for musical events. In every house he had ever owned, he had gatherings for musicians. He wanted to do, do what he had always been doing at just a slightly larger scale. <clears throat> Jim was a mathematician trained at Stanford, the University of Toronto, and worked at the London, uh, University of London. His mathematics research focused on harmonic analysis and functional analysis. <clears throat> Jim never set out to write textbooks. He was a gifted teacher who was always excited by calculus. He was able to convey his enormous enthusiasm for mathematics to his students, always guiding them to the gentle, gently to the right solutions. One day, at one of the end of his classes at McMaster University, two of his students told him that the questions he prepared for them in class were so much better than the textbooks he assigned them. This got him thinking. And Jim was best known for a series of calculus textbooks used for high school, college, and university levels. In a way, many of his calculus textbooks featured the integral sign, which is exactly the same shape as the sound hole of a violin. The integral sign in calculus has the shape of an elongated S, because the integral is the limit of the sums. <clears throat> in a way, the area of, of a curve is really difficult to compute, 
and it requires integrals or these limit of sums. When there is a single integral it is needed to find area, it's one thing, but a double integral is required for volumes. So throughout the integral house, there are many integral signs. They can be found in the front door handle, in the plan of the outdoor fountain, in the balustrades of the staircase, and many more places if you know where to look. <clears throat> Jim's first calculus textbook took him seven years to write. He really totally rethought the content. <clears throat> when Jim um, realized this, he, he became really one of the most published mathematicians since Euclid. Jim was a calculus rock star. Given his interest in curves, one of the first architects Jim interviewed early on was Frank Gehry. Jim and Frank hit it off, and Frank agreed to design a house for Jim. <clears throat> Jim decided this was not quite the right fit for him, even though he admired Frank's work greatly. We all know that Frank Gehry has been published all around the world, but until Jim Stewart came along, Gehry's architecture had never graced the cover of a best-selling calculus textbook. <laughs> in, in this textbook, Jim wrote an essay entitled Calculus and the Architecture of Curves, linking architecture and mathematics. <clears throat> In the beginning, Howard and I studied the curvilinear forms in sketches. We continue to explore conceptual ideas through drawings and the spatial possibilities of curves. We use models, large ones and big ones, to really explore the physical idea of space. We experimented with the idea of a glowing wooden curtain that would open up to a nearby Toronto ravine and studied its possibilities. At the beginning of our physical journey, the photographer Ed Bertinsky documented the demolition of the existing residence and the rebuilding of the new house. In a way, Ed's photographs and time-lapse videos provide a remarkable record of the destruction and then also the rebuilding of the new. <clears throat> Bertinsky's photographs makes you aware of the steepness of the ravine slope. He also reminds us as to how many people it really requires to build buildings. Ed also captured the numerous layers needed of construction to realize a space. <clears throat> there were many experiments in this project. To create this wooden curtain opening up to a view of the ravine resulted in 97 different wooden fins that shape and reorient your views. <clears throat> Above and below, there are also a series of wooden structural fins that receive the glazing and shapes the light. In a way, we wanted to use these types of wooden fins to help us paint with light. We live at 43 degrees latitude in Toronto, a seasonal climate. We wanted to harness light as a force that was continually recalibrating your understanding of this fluid space. <clears throat> Jim also asked us at the outset to integrate a glass art piece into the house. He didn't want an object that was glass, but actually a space that was actually utilizing glass. We worked collaboratively with an artist, Mimi Gelman, Norbert Statler, glass fabricator, and our structural engineers, Blackwell, and our own studio to create a blue glass stair. This view of the installation shows hundreds of cast bronze clips that are held up by stainless steel cables that ultimately support the blue glass stair. Howard and I consider well-designed hardware as the handshake of a building that greets you every single day. We experimented in clay, 3D prints, and plastic to create a mold. And finally, a sensual door handle inspired by the integral sign that you experience throughout the house. <clears throat> so from the street, it reads as a two-story house, convex and concave glass hovering over a wooden entry. And when you arrive, you're at the upper portion of a double height space with the living room and dining room to the left and right. <clears throat> But the project is really about movement and challenging your relationship to nature. When you enter the house, we wanted you to feel as if you had entered a Toronto ravine, even though you'd never stepped outside. <clears throat> the project also celebrates and honors the remarkable local craftsmen and skilled trades that we are so fortunate to have in the city of Toronto. Bronze, leather, stainless steel mesh are crafted and woven together. <clears throat> This curtain of white oak reveals the Toronto ravine beyond. In this photo, Jim is standing in the upper level living room, which is often used as a balcony during performances. As the landscape changes, your experience of the space also changes. 
The outside impacts the inside. Your relationship to nature is dynamic and always being recalibrated. Abstracted, shaped wooden columns are pulled inside to hold up the main space. The wooden fins modulate light at points of intense curvature. The golden curtain fluctuates around the space, giving presence to natural light. Jim is playing his violin surrounded by nature. Many musicians have told us that they feel like they are playing in an instrument when they're in the space. Landscape pulls you outside of the space while descending down, <clears throat> and Jim's workspace is more outside than inside. Nature is all around you and is continually framed and reframed. <clears throat> the pool is yet another way to reflect light and nature by pulling the outside in. <clears throat> the blue glass stair links you to the sky. The stair pushes light into the center of the house. <clears throat> the shaped blue glass and natural skylights create an endless space for moving between levels. <clears throat> and it supports the, blue the supports for the blue glass stair appear like musical notes. Jim Stewart commissioned Vancouver composer Rodney Sharman to prepare a piece for the St. Lawrence String Quartet, which first played in the inaugural concert in November of October of 2008. <clears throat> At the outset, the two violinists and the violas played to each other, calling out across the space and exploring its qualities on their own. <clears throat> Later in the piece, the musicians in the St. Lawrence String Quartet came together to play with cellist Shauna Ralston. It was a really great start to the space. <clears throat> During the construction of the house, Jim had no idea that the house as a space of performance would be in such great demand. And since the inaugural concert, there have been so many events in the space that really transformed and enriched Jim's life. He felt that there were so many arts organizations in the city and our country that are hurting for money. And he felt that it was important to raise money and equally important was to build a network of friends and supporters for these organizations. There have been many celebratory events that have supported a broad range of worthy artistic causes. <clears throat> Jim has also always been supportive of his own LGBT community from his outset as a young academic and used this space to champion those causes as well. Events in the space range from the Cabbage Town Community Arts Center with children from the local Boys and Girls Club performing <clears throat> to Philip Glass in support of Luminato, raising funds to remount Einstein at the beach to the Zata Um Dance Company, to Steve Reich playing with Nexus in support of Sound Streams Canada, the Aldenburg Connection performing with surprise guest soprano Adrian Pichonka. And in 2009, the Simon Boulevard Orchestra took Toronto by storm with plane loads of young people from El Sistema Venezuela performing throughout the GTA. This, a special concert took place in Toronto with their best musicians playing at the Integral House. The founder of El Sistema, Sema, Dr. Abreu, was awarded the Glenn Gould Prize in 2008. Here's a view of Francis Lankin, the head of the United Way, honoring him with this award. A few like-minded individuals happened to meet in the wonderful gathering that took place and asked themselves why there was not a version of El Sistema Toronto helping our youth at risk in, in our own city. This chance encounter in Jim Stewart's living room was the beginning of Sistema Toronto. With the support of many uh, great citizens, Sistema Toronto has thrived and continues to make a difference. A few years later, the director approached Jim to see if they could perform in the Integral House. Jim enthusiastically agreed. In October of 2013, James Innes, the violinist, the Cecilia String Quartet, and the fledgling Sistema Toronto Quintet performed. For the young musicians from Sistema Toronto, this was their musical debut. And Meryl Chris, the director, eloquently described the impact of this chance encounter, this place of gathering, and how it really has had this incredible, <clears throat> uh, made a difference in the lives of so many families using music as the central core. 
We need spaces like this in our city, like this wonderful Kerner Hall, like the Integral House, places of encounter, places of exchange, places of gathering to bring people together around the arts. We need spaces that are large and small that provide opportunities for the arts to thrive in our everyday lives. Many of the concerts that Jim organized in the house were fundraisers, but there are others that were really simply Jim as the empresario. He designed his final concert knowing that his time had run out. He passed away in uh, December of 2014. And he lined up such an impressive group that he decided to hold his wake before he died rather than after so he could enjoy it himself. His, his lineup included Jay Ren, a Chinese pop star who had an amazing yodeling voice, Bruce Thompson and Bill Ralph, both mathematician musicians who sang Broadway musicals, a brilliant violinist, Blake Puglio. So this is the, the, uh, the actual email he sent out to all his friends, and the unstoppable Misha Bruger Gossman, who sang the last four songs of Richard Strauss. The final act was filmmaker Joseph Clement, whose show, who showed excerpts from a documentary called The Integral Man. And it was started before Jim knew that he was dying, and is really a, a kind of moving tribute to Jim. So what I will end with is a footage from Joseph Clement's recently completed film, The Integral Man, which so eloquently captures the experience of being in the space, which has been shaped by Jim Stewart's unbridled passion for mathematics, architecture, and music. So here's a short clip of the film. So it turns out that Integral House is for sale. If there are any of you out here who've made a billion dollars based on math, <laughs> now is your moment. Bridget, there are various rumors about how much it costs to build that house. I've seen numbers that range from 23 million all the way up to 33 million. No comment.